All put on by Beaches Go Green because that's just one example yeah. of some of the great and creative student videos that are on there showing us things we can do on Earth Day and every day. That's right. All right, so let's keep learning. And when it comes to Earth Day, we want to invite our friends in from Mosh to teach us even more. Our friend Eddie is back. Eddie, welcome back to River City Live. And today we're talking about space and Earth Day and all that stuff together. I came in my motif. I call it... Um Earth in space, you would, you would really like it because you like sharp things, Mark. I do, I do. Okay. And you Looking always sharp. have sharp. Looking very sharp. I am. If I wouldn't kick the microphone, then I would act sharp too. <laughs> um, so today I brought a couple things. Um, so I, I figured it's Earth Day, so I would bring this. Uh, I was hoping one of you all would be out here with me so that you could, so I could put you to the test because we've been uh, here a couple of times and I was hoping that you would be able to um, remember a, th a thing or two about the lessons that we have brought to River City Live. And so I'm just gonna let the Earth uh, give birth to the moon, which is kind of what happened, but not so, uh, not so, not in the way that I just showed you right there. <laughs> but we do have, we do have the Earth and we do have the moon that's right here. And so um, do you remember how far away this thing would have to be if you did have a scale uh, size? I think it was Eden that I came out like maybe six, eight months ago with this. What, what do you think? Oh my gosh, I don't even know what I had for breakfast. But How you know about... What? It was a lot farther yeah, it was than, we, really far. than we thought. It was and, farther than you thought. There's yeah. not enough room inside of this, uh, inside of our lobby right here. And so wow. I'm not even gonna separate it. We'll just kind of throw the moon okay. at the camera. We'll hold right it there. in here. There you go. Yeah, that's, oh, look at that toss I just made. That was good. Okay, <laughs> um, you know, so, so uh, before, we, before we start, it's worth noting that this is the way that we do things in our camps. And so, you know, it's just about to be summer, and summer camp for us is a major thing. So parents should consider uh, filling some of the openings for our camps that we have, because when we teach science, we want to do, we want to demonstrate, we want to be in a planetarium, we want to play around with Earth and Moon models, and we want to do a little bit of what this is right here. So... Um, one of the crucial parts about Earth that we know about life on the surface is that there are clouds, and clouds play this tremendous role in spreading water throughout the, the atmosphere of our planet. And so one of the ways that that happens is that, yeah, water evaporates off of the surface, but the clouds are formed when you rise up, when updrafts or somehow uh, air finds itself rising up in the atmosphere and losing pressure. So what I have here is uh, some liquid inside of this bottle right here. And uh, I pumped just like, just pumped as much pressure as I possibly can inside of here. What I'm going to do um, is release all this pressure all at once. And we'll take a look, see if you can find a cloud that forms in it. Let's see if we can get a, a nice close up here. We're gonna lose all this pressure all at once. This is gonna be a dramatic form. Hopefully the cloud forms. Oh, oh wow. Wow, what? That, yeah. I was looking for some little bitty cloud that we would have to squint to see. Yeah, same no. here. You had me hook, line, and sinker on that one, Eddie. No, I bring bona fide clouds when you I come. You sure do. <laughs> there you go. But that's, that is a cool thing to do in a camp scenario because kids are going to remember these things. Yeah, and it's that. But then we also uh, we, we, we link that up with a citizen science project that's out there. So you can go look at... Uh, all you have to do is, gl is Google Globe Observer, and it's a citizen science project that you'll be led to through Globe Observer, and what you do is from your location on Earth, your GPS and your phone, you're going to take a picture up and to the right and to the left all around, and you are going to add to a data bank of data about clouds in your area, and this is going to help scientists be able to study clouds um, and the way that they work day in and day out. It's Earth Day. Go ahead, Globe Observer. Check it out. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, bring the kiddos to us. We'll do it with them at another time also. Another critical part about Earth. Um, Earth is like a big magnet. And I don't know if we can bring the camera over here in order to see this, but we have an invisible force field around our planet. And um, we're going to see if we can't get a... Uh, uh, is there any way to get an overhead view of what we're going to see? Can we do that? Anyways, uh, I have a magnet right here. 
and we're going to sprinkle some of these. Uh, this, is a pretty, this is a pretty traditional or classic uh, kind of demonstration to show magnetic fields around a magnet. But when we talk about Earth, um, the Earth is this just like big magnet in space. And we're lucky to have it because not all planets have this. Um, one planet that uh, comes to mind and that has been on the news a whole bunch here recently is Mars. And Mars actually lacks this thing that I am showing you right here. It doesn't have a magnetic field. It doesn't have essentially this invisible force field that keeps us safe from the most harsh and energetic rays of the sun. It just kind of, it hits this, it hits this magnetic field and just completely dodges planet Earth. Mars doesn't have this, and so Mars is just impacted by, these, uh, by, by this radiation that the sun is constantly shooting out into space, and you know we're just lucky to have it. Earth comes with invisible force fields, cute little moons that actually help keep us stable, <laughs> uh, an atmosphere with clouds, people. Love this place. It's worth loving. Hey, Eddie, really quick. Do you need that magnetic field in order to have life on a planet? Is that a necessity to help break up the radiation of the sun? So this is a good question. You hit a really good question. Um, the life, the way that it has adapted to our planet, it is necessary. So the big question is, can life adapt to a planet that doesn't? The answer might be no. But here's the thing. Uh, the ocean life doesn't need this kind of protection, so we think. Yeah. The ocean would provide the protection that's needed. But surface-dwelling life like us, ah, no. <laughs> yeah, we, well, need I, it. we need to do what we can to protect it as well. And we'll have plenty more.